Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, today I got a tutorial for you. Now, I want to do today is a tutorial on setting up audio compressor. A lot of my audience does live streaming, podcasting, uh, even like video blogging and stuff on YouTube, and a few others do like you know, record like weddings and stuff or photography, and whatnot. And a lot of times I need to be able to get the audio to sound really good in them. And one of those tools that you can use is an audio compressor. Now for this tutorial, I have chosen TDR uh, Kotelnikov because not only do they have a paid version, but they also have a free version. And we're going to be using the free version for the tutorial because it's free and it's one of the best uh, ones out period, regardless of price range. So yeah, uh, if you're trying to improve your audio and stuff, this is going to be a really good tutorial for you on how to set up an audio compressor. Now, before we get started, check out this awesome product from A Shampoo. A Shampoo Backup Pro 14 backs up your data and operating system automatically to all common storage types and cloud services. Always up to date backups take the fear out of hardware failure, OS issues, or malware infections. Don't miss my demo and review of Backup Pro 14. Plus, learn more and download your free trial by clicking the links in the description below. Okay, everybody. For this tutorial, we are going to be using the free version. Now, there is a paid version, the Gentleman's Edition, which I have and I use. However, I think for the most uh, folks watching this video, who are doing podcasting, live streaming, YouTube vlogging, or just YouTube content creation, they will absolutely not need the paid version. I just kind of had uh, wanted to get it because I like the plugin. I want to support the company and it had a little bit of features that I kind of use. I kind of like, however, it is absolutely not essential. And the regular free version of Kotelnikov works great. And I recommend you try the uh, free version first and you can read up on about the gentleman's edition and decide later on if you want to purchase the gentleman's edition. All right, let's go over everything on here. All right. The Kotelnikov here, uh, mastering compressor obviously below that we have low frequency relax this tells the compressor at a certain point for example frequency 100 hertz and at a 3 db octave drop off to ignore certain frequencies that way those frequencies don't uh, cause the compressor to actually you know start working for example uh it might actually you know tell the compressor to compress if you got like a lot of keyboard banging wind uh wind blowing across your microphone you know plosives for example and you don't want those triggering the compressor so i recommend actually putting this on about 6 db octave and about 100 hertz is fine however the actual you know a lot of people will actually want to bring that up say like 200 hertz just to ensure that there's no plosives or anything triggering it all right now we have a threshold here. Now the threshold is currently at zero dB, which means uh, anything you know below zero dB at the moment is being ignored, which pretty much means the compressor is off. Now let's bring it up to about negative 25 dB, whereas you know most people want it set for vocals. All right, let me explain threshold here. Everything currently below the negative 25 dB will actually be ignored by the compressor. As soon as the com anything spikes above, you know, the threshold of negative 25 dB, for example, negative 25.1 dB or higher, the compressor will start compressing down that audio. And it will start compressing down the audio by a ratio of two to one. We'll come back to that here in a moment. All right. The next uh, option here, we have peak crest. And this will uh, tells Kotelnikov to trigger on peaks around 3 dB. And we have a soft knee. Now, peak crest here, I'm gonna go back to it uh, right quick because I almost got ahead of myself. You, we're gonna set this one over to RMS. And we'll notice we have a release peak button here that disappears when that we do that. But if you went back the other direction, the release RMS button, you know, disappears. Basically what Kotelnikov does, it lets you blend in the release of peaks and RMSs to give a better overall signal. However, for vocals, we're going to be using RMS. And this is a feature that you don't find on a lot of compressors. Matter of fact, you don't find soft knee and peak on pretty much most compressors on the market, even the high dollar boutique ones. 
Uh, so these are very, very nice features that you absolutely just won't find on pretty much any other free uh, VSD plugin out there. You know, compressor plugin. Making Kotelnikov one of the best in the world, in my honest opinion. All right. So, yeah, that's complete uh, crest. If you want to know more, read the manual. You go to the gear icon over here and click it. Then you can go to help, and there's a you know manual you can read up on it and, and explain all that in more detail than I have time for in this tutorial. All right. Now we have ratio here. And uh, ratio pretty much is how much the compression is working. Remember, if it goes above 25 dB now, it starts adding a gentle compression and the higher it goes up, the more compression it will start adding. All right. For most vocals, a two to one or a more gentle 1.5 to one compression will be added. However, more aggressive uh, vocals, you may need to go up to 2.5 to one or to three to one. However, I personally would not go over three to one unless you have a Pacific uh use case you know there's if there's absolute reason you need to and but we can get in that to a later video most folks and i'm gonna recommend just stick it two to one and leave it there and you can adjust it up if more if you need to or down if you find that you want to get your audio up higher and you keep uh peaking too much you may want to increase the compression however there is a very good chance if you start driving that up really too high like say seven to one your audio is going to sound really over compressed and I highly recommend you don't do that. So like I said, two to one is a great starting point and where I recommend you going to you know, try it out. All right. Now below that we have an attack and release. All right. We have two release buttons. Like I mentioned a while ago, and we have a, a release peak and release RMS. And this has to do with triggering the compressor. And cause like I said, Patelna call lets you trigger both off the peaks and the overall, you know, general RMS of the signal. All right. But we're not going to go into peak. I'm just going to work on release here and release RMS is pretty much what most compressors use anyway. Uh, peak is something that you don't see in a lot of compressors. Now we have an attack. This tells the compressor how fast to uh, start compressing once it hears vocals. And like I said, default is at six milliseconds. I actually recommend you know, something a little bit more around, you know, 0.10 milliseconds. However, it goes all the way up to a very 0.02, but might sound a little rough. So to make it sound a little more softer, you want to go a little slower. However, if you get too slow, then you start running in the, uh, the issue of your audio standing like it's, you know, not getting me compressed fast enough and it might sound a little jittery. So you want to avoid that. All right. Now, like I said, uh, we have a peak uh, release peak here, release RMS. Let's go back up here to peak and let's just drive that over to RMS so we can ignore that button or vocals, just ignore it. All right. About 250 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds is what I recommend for vocals. Uh, where 333 milliseconds is, you know, one third of a second. You know, 250 milliseconds is one fourth of a second. So about 200 to 250 is pretty much average and it's a good place to start with, especially for compressor and the attack around 0.10 milliseconds is a good uh, place for it as well. Now the soft knee here, uh, by default, normally around six DB is really good for it. Like I said, soft knee is also something you don't find on a lot of compressors. I know I keep trying to, you know, let everybody know that, but this is something you don't. And this really helps you know, take that edge down, whereas most compressors come up to a certain point. For example, most compressors come up to say, we have our threshold set at negative 25. As soon as it hit uh, negative 25 and anything above that, it starts straight away compressing. Very machine-like, very militaristic. Just either it's not compressing or it's compressing uh, down as much as it can, you know, set by your ratio, obviously. Whereas a soft knee will actually help it uh, slide in more gently into that, uh, uh, so you don't have such a sharp knee. Like I said, go over to the cog wheel, click, read the manual if you want to know more about it. And of course, also when I did my uh, demo review of Kotelnikov, I went into quite a bit of detail about it as well and gave you examples and showed you how it would actually affect your audio. Now, 6 dB is really good soft knee. 
I recommend pushing that on up to about 9 dB. And if you want to push it up higher, say negative 12 dB, you can. Now keep in mind at negative 12 dB, uh, this will make your threshold start, uh, your compressor start working and triggering sooner. So the threshold we have set at regular negative uh, 25 dB, and this could make your uh, compressor start actually triggering around negative 31 dB, you know. So, you know, 12 dB, you know, divide that in half, 6 dB. So add 6 dB onto the bottom of that one. Negative 31 dB is where the, uh, it should start uh, triggering around that uh, mark to really start, you know, going in gently into the compression. It will make it more uh, transparent, but it will lower the threshold. Just keep that in mind. Uh, I think for most folks, around 9 dB is what I'm going to highly recommend to keep that knee as transparent as possible, make your audio sound very natural. All right. Now we have stereo sensitivity on here at the bottom. Before I forget that, most audio will be recorded in as mono, so or dual mono, which is what I'm actually recording in at. So yeah, you can ignore it. Of course, if you want to sit over here to mono and just uh, forget about it, it's fine. Most people can use using like a user interface, like a 2i2, a Moto M2, or Behringer uh, UMC2, uh, 202 or something that nature. And they're going to be having a left and right channel. And they're going to be having it obviously plugged in into the right or the left. So therefore, they're only going to get one signal in. So if you want to set it on mono, that's fine. Or stereo. For uh, live streaming stuff, I recommend Eco. Yeah, keep it on Eco. Uh, if you're going to be doing any kind of like live streaming, podcasting, you know, anything that's, you know, where you can be doing more live work. And to keep the uh, plug-in for eating up too much CPU resources and keep the latency lower. Now, of course, if you want to be doing any kind of like YouTube work, you're going to be using like, uh, you know, you know, Premiere or Resolve or whatever your other, you know, audio, uh, not audio, but video editor you're using. You can click it on the precise and have this work a little more precise. But I recommend Eco for live streamers and podcasters where people are doing live broadcasting. All right. So for the most part, that's uh, pretty much it. So... Now what we do have over here, we do have an out gain, and this will actually adjust like any other uh, gain output. Say, hey, if your audio is too low, you can bring it up. So let me play back my demo audio I have here, and I actually show you, you know, the plug in here and, and uh, action. Dynamics processor combining high fidelity. Okay, let me click this little plus button to show you more of the screen here. As a descendant of the team as we can see, Kotelnikov is pressing this down about a negative two, you know, two or three dB here. What about two and a half so far? Individual release control for peak and R. And if I increase the ratio here, you'll notice it starts compressing down more. State of the art high precision algorithms. So when it gets louder, it starts compressing down quite a bit more there. Such as equal loudness control and frequency dependent ratio for compression. And if we back back on the ratio, he knows it does a whole lot less compression. Right. Let's go back to two to one here. Now also we have output gain. Right now, uh, this audio is recorded in and it's getting around at peaking at negative 12. And for example, I may want to, you know, which I highly recommend, people have the audio come out where it's peaking around negative six. So I can bring this on up here, say six dB. Yeah, we back up. And that way it's peaking around negative six dB there. Just barely hitting negative five, which is pretty much perfect. That's what I recommend. So yeah, let me just go ahead and stop this now. So yeah, that's a really good setting there. That's what I highly recommend. Uh, at least for vocals and stuff, it's gonna sound very good, very transparent. Now they do have some other options here, uh, some presets already in the uh, compressor. They have vocal bus type, if you click on it, you can try that out, see if it works for you. Uh, I think this is probably a good compression vocal bus if you do like rapping for the settings and stuff they have here. However, vocal bus warm is also a real good one, for example, about what we was doing just now. And I think their attack's a little too quick, but it actually be pretty decent for like, you know, singing or something or other, or just even uh, vocals in general. But yeah. Overall, those are really good ones. If you don't want to remember my settings, just click it on Vocal Bus Warm. That's a really good starting point, and you can try that out and see if it helps you know, improve your audios. Just remember, if your audio is too low, 
you can just bring up the gain right here by default this focal bus one puts it on you know plus four db but hey if your audio is going in still too loud you could also bring it back down but you uh, but it shouldn't be unless one of your other plugins is being too loud so anyway uh try these settings out and see if they help your audio and stuff for your podcasting you know live streaming or vlogging and stuff of that nature and do check out kotelnikov the links for it will be down in the description below okay everybody well uh like i said that's how to set up kotelnikov uh like I said, it's one of the best audio compressors out do check out my demo review for it it will be linked up in the cards on whichever side of the screen it's going to be on but yeah check out Co uh, kotelnikov it's wonderful highly recommend it and of course like i said it's free so check down the links down in the description below i have a link down there so you go to tokyo dawn's website and download it and start using it today now i am not being paid to make this video about tokyo dawn however if you want to help support this channel do check out uh you know a shampoo backup pro uh yeah blue is the one i used to have an advert for this video but yeah check out uh, a shampoo backup pro i use it all the time to help ensure that my data doesn't get lost due to hardware failure or get attacked by ransomware so yeah, if your data is important to you do check out uh, a shampoo backup pro backup pro works really well i highly recommend it and of course i have a review on it also a little demo so you can check that uh, also down in the links down in the description below as well as my affiliate link to it but anyway that's it for this video everyone I appreciate you taking time to watch it and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you do like this video, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up so is highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing's free, it's for you, unless you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.